Welcome to Cephastock Movie Recaps. Today we dive into the movie series, C, Full Season 2 in Summary, Episode 1 to 8. If you are new on this channel please don't hesitate to subscribe, your support is what keeps us moving and you should know that your subscription is highly appreciated my dear friend, thank you. The movie begins with Baba Voss, Paris, and Kofan reaching Trivandi city where Hanawa is being kept by her uncle Edo Voss. They encountered the Trivantian soldiers, Baba Voss and Kofan fought the soldiers and killed them, Baba goes into the city by himself, leaving Kofan and Paris on the outskirts where they will be safer. But, much later, he would have died from his wound. Dead. Not a warrior. Beautiful. Your eyes betray you. Remember. Come back with Haniwa. And swear it again. Say it. Seven days, we go. While inside, Baba reunites with an old friend, Yakis, who tells him that his daughter is probably in a closed compound known as Base 3. After crawling his way through a blazing tunnel, Baba is betrayed by the same men he paid to help him. He kills the men but however, the guards already know he's there. Baba would have likely gotten farther if not for Rockwell, a child of Jerlomero who possesses sight and gives away his location. After getting captured and bound, Baba is visited by Edo who shows him no mercy and orders to have him whipped. <laughs> Meanwhile, Haniwa has been kept as a prisoner and chained to a bed. Slowly, she gets closer to her warden, a Trivantian lieutenant named Ren who has an ability of seeing as well. In the act of escaping, Haniwa has the opportunity to kill her warden but does not take it, thus gaining the other Renz's as trust further. And let me go. Fuck! Later, Ren repays Haniwa by taking her to a secret place of hers, an apartment with no easy access to those without vision. In this apartment, the relationship between the two young women goes a step further, entering the realm of the romance. After facing whips for four days consecutively, Baba is thrown in jail. Stop. You must. <laughs> Don't know what sorry is. You. Surprisingly, Tamakti June is being imprisoned in the next cell. The Witchfinder General tells Baba that not only is Het not yet a widower but also that his wife, Magra, is a princess. You say she's a princess. Edo orders guards to have Hanawa be taken to his house, where he'll have her sexually assaulted to produce sighted children. After Ren knows about, she goes to free Baba. He convinces his unexpected savior to release Tamakti as well. So, Ren and Baba encroaches Edo's house. You only hang you once. Oh, we die here. You're sighted, aren't you? Barely touches the ground. It's not going to be your uncle Ito. Ren finds and saves Hanua, and in turn, Hanua rescues her father from being killed by Edo. And leave your city to the ground. He fights with us. Hanua! No! Please. We have to go. The four manages to escape to the eastern gate and get to freedom. But Ren decides to stay behind, leaving Hanua with a memento, a necklace. Magra and Sibeth and their witchfinders make their way to Pensa. Passing the city gates, 
the royal sisters are led to Lord Harlan's home. The queen has Harlan give up his house to her and her sister. On the contrary. The witchfinders Toad, Fry and Dax finally find Paris and Coffin. Toad tells them that Magra is both alive and a princess. Coffin agrees to be taken back to Pensa, while Paris stays behind to wait for Baba's return. Coffin gradually warms up to Toad, who is more tolerant towards witches than the other two. Before they realize, Fry and Dax end up making an attempt on Coffin's life, only to be stopped by Toad. Behind Coffin and his witchfinder guard, Haniwa, Baba, and Tamakti also make their way to Paya. On their way, they are reunited with Paris who has been in the company of the Compass, a group of warrior women who protect the sighted. Papa! Paris! You are not fit to travel. Oh, we will go now. No! We need his help. His ears as a trophy. No. Even now his breath fails him. He needs rest. To the camp, Pensa. Charlotte. How many sighted children have you met? Protecting the sighted when vision returns. You are one of them. During Queen Kane's speech, she announces that Pensa is the new capital of the Pyan Kingdom and alleges, to Harlan's and Magra's dislike, that Kanzua was destroyed by the Trivantians and that she has a baby inside her who will be born with vision. Neither Harlan nor Magra are successful in preventing the Queen from going to war with Trivantes. They incidentally try, however, the Queen decide that marrying her sister to the Lord of Pensa would make for a good strategic alliance. Queen Kane gets a miscarriage and in her sorrowful stage, she kills both Korra and Boots. What did you put in me? <gasps> a stronger baby. No matter Alleman's trying hard, Jerlomero's sight cannot be repaired. When Edo comes to visit him, he realizes he no longer possesses the power of vision. This discovery prompts Edo to cut off Jerlomero. Before leaving, he assigns his son Alleman to work under Tormada, a Trivantian scientist. And make it possible. They must not know of my injury. What is it? The general's here. And why's that? Where's the son? Why in the world would I free Bubba Voss? We do when we meet. And why aren't you moving around like you used to? <laughs> No! This house belongs to me now. He's one of our greatest scientists. Tormada, you work for him now. Sibeth announces to the Council of Pensa that Magra and Harlan are not only getting married and that they are doing so soon. Although this is not Magra wants, she believes that marrying Harlan is a way to protect her children, so she goes along with it. Kofan finally arrives to Payan, However the surprised princess did not expect was for her son to arrive on the day of the ceremony. Although they are glad to see each other again, understandably, Kofan is not happy to find out his mother is marrying another man. Witnessed by the Pyan people but seen solely by Kofan's eyes of dissatisfaction, Harlan and Magra become husband and wife. That night, Queen Kane makes a striking introduction to Kofan, cleverly sowing the seeds of the fruits she intends to reap. Due to Baba's injuries, the small group is forced to stop in the Lakelands, Valier territory. There, the last of the Alchemy, are reunited with Bao Lion. Tamakti does not join them, as he is not welcomed by the Valier. Instead, the Witchfinder General is left to deal with the guilt brought about by the distant screams of the innocent lives he slain. Even though he did not get any action on his wedding night, Harlan nevertheless asks his brother Kerrigan to help Magra by finding Hanua, whom they still believe to be in Trivantes. However, instead of Hanua, Harlan is horrified to be brought back his brother's cut-off head. Trivantes reaches out to Paya with an offer of parley. Magra convinces her sister to allow her to go to the peace talks, instead of opting for the violent alternative. The queen agrees, however, she also demands a formal apology for the attack on Kanzua, leaving Magra with no other option but to attempt the seemingly impossible. Baba and the rest of the group arrive in Pensa. 
Tamakdi secretly goes to regather with those among the Witchfinders who are still loyal to him. After making a grand entrance in the royal estate, Baba and Magra finally find each other again, and the family of four is happily reunited. The joy does not last very long as Lord Harlan appears and introduces himself as Magra's husband. As expected, this news does NT sound well to Baba. Paris wakes up from a feeling that things will go wrong at the peace talks. Hanua leaves on horse, with the intention on warning her parents about the Paris auguring nightmare. While packing, Ren, who will be Eco Voss at the summit, Voss is promoted from lieutenant to captain by Edo. In Pensa, Toad has begun training Kofan, instructing him not to rely on his eyes so much. The queen, using every tactic, including drugs, gets what she wants from Kofan. Before the peace talks begin, Hanua arrives and tells her parents about Paris' dream. Although they take the warning seriously, they decide to go ahead with the talks as leaving would surely make war an inevitability. The two sides sit down to talk diplomacy, however, an agreement is not reached and the talks end abruptly when Harlan launches at Commander Watts, Michel Giroux, and makes some provocation regarding his brother's demise. At night, Harlan sets up an off-the-record meeting with Ambassador Scopus, which he, Magra, and Baba Voss attend. The Trivantian and Pyan side reach an agreement, Trivandis will pretend to apologize to appease the Queen, and Paya will agree to the borders as delineated by the other nation. Unfortunately, Paris turns out to have been right. Queen Cain sent two killers to crush the peace talks, and they succeed in doing so by killing a number of soldiers and the Trivantian delegates, Watts and Scopus. Ren survives and is tends to assume that Hanua, who spent the night with her, did so as a distraction. Later when confronted with her unlikely survival, Ren is left with no choice but to reveal to Edo she can see. While at a conference in the throne room where Sibeth declares that war is the only path forward, Magra tells her sister, in front of everyone, that the Witchfinders will not fight for her. It is then that Tamakti reveals himself exposes the Queen's lies. Sibeth is forcefully deposed, and Magra instated as Queen. Paris stands up and announces that the eldest Cain is with child, saving the life of both the mother and baby. Toad, her death can wait. Tamakti suggests that they make their stand at Greenhill Gap. Hanua and Kofan insist on going to war much as Baba and Magra do not like the idea, claiming that their sight is an indispensable advantage. Kofan also secretly struggles with the fact that the Sibeth is pregnant with his child. Tamakti prevents Magra from going to the battlefield. Although she is no longer joining in the battle, Magra sends her troops to war with an inspiring and honest speech. No sooner the army leaves, gets Toad to come with her on a necessary trip. Edo send two assassins to finish Magra. Thanks to Harlan, who comes to her rescue and gets injured in the process, the new queen lives another day. Magra's troops reach Greenhill Gap before the Trivantians. When the enemy army arrives, Hanua convinces her father to allow her to go to the other side to announce that Queen Cain has been dethroned. Hanua meets with Ren, and although they reach an understanding, there is nothing to be done to stop the battle. The Trivantian battalion advances and the Pians take refuge inside the fortress where they are prepared to make their stand. Things begin to look up for the Pians when the hidden tribes, guided by Paris and Toad, arrive at Greenhill Gap to stand with Baba Voss. As Magra asks, Sibeth is more than happy to tell her who the father of her child is. Unsurprisingly, Magra is angered, even though she cannot bring herself to fully believe her sister is telling the truth. The Pians use every trick at their disposal to try to get the upper hand on the larger force. We fight for love! I am Baba Voss!
it's not you who's leaving. Toad once again saves Kofan's life but is killed soon thereafter. Baba excuses their last strategy of breaking the ice underneath the Trivanchan army's feet, thus, swinging the battle in their favor. Baba Voss goes to meet his younger surviving brother, Edo on a bridge, Baba tries to reason with Edo, but the commander is unwilling to listen. The two fiercely engage into a fight. Left with no other choice, Baba ends up fatally stabbing his brother. As he lay dying in a grieving Baba's arms, Edo finally listens to the true reason behind his father's murder. Haniwa says her farewells to Ren, who could not be persuaded to leave behind her family in Trivantes. Kofan rebukes his sister for letting the Trivantian captain leave. Survivors get back to Pensa. Magra greets her family with tears and open arms. She makes Tamakti the high general of the Paian army. However, many among the witchfinders are not pleased with the current state of things, and they turn their backs on their general. One morning, Baba leaves the capital before Magra wakes up. Paris goes to check up on Sibeth and her unborn baby however the vengeful woman cut the presage's throat, announcing her intention of not letting anyone take her child away. You have a demonstration for me. You have reached at the end of the video, please don't hesitate to give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Your support is highly appreciated, and it gives us morale to continuously provide more videos like this. Thank you for watching, you can click to the next video right there.